Hi and welcome back to a new video and also the first Computex video even though it's not even shot at Computex that is because I had a first hands-on experience already back here in Berlin because this is a Link Plus product. Link Plus is something you might be familiar with. We featured this already in a video last year from Computex and they now partnered up with Paylit to make this very special RTX 4090 that also has this nice looking screen in the front. It is mainly about the fully modular AIO concept that Link Plus already showed last time, but it's now much more mature and the first time also in partnership with an official graphics card vendor. It's time to experience the epic performance and computing power of Hetzner's dedicated GPU server GEX44. It houses a heavy-duty NVIDIA RTX 4000 SFF ADA generation graphics card with 20GB of GDDR6 ECC GPU memory, which makes it an ideal and affordable option for use of trained AI models. The Intel Core i5-13500 CPU with HT and virtualization also features 6 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores, which makes this server even more special. Two speed 1.92 terabyte generation 3 data center NVMe SSDs plus 64 gigabyte of DDR4 memory complete this powerhouse. Hetzner is well known for their extraordinary price performance ratio and operates several hundred thousands of servers in their own high tech data centers in Germany and Finland, which makes them GDPR compliant. Click on the link below and find out more about Hetzner's dedicated GPU server. The entire concept, as I said before, bases on modular AIO. This part looks like an AIO with the pump head missing, but the pump actually sits on top in the radiator. So that's a 360 version, has some Arctic fans in it and quick connect fittings on the front. And these would go onto the graphics card, for example, and for the future, they also plan to have water cooling blocks with the same connect system. And then you can not only have one of those um, radiators in your loop, or you could also have two of the radiators um, running in serial. So you can just split this and connect another radiator pump connection to it, run it into your GPU, run it into your CPU, and thus have some kind of uh, modular AIO system. And what I found very interesting from the first day is the pricing concept, because we know that this system right here with a 360 radiator and pump and fans costs maybe around 100 euro. And what Link always highlights is that the manufacturing cost of the water block that sits in here is roughly the same as with an air cooling unit. And especially, we know it from the 4090, and I'm pretty sure it will not be much better with the 5090. The cards are power hungry and require a lot of cooling. Thus, they will have to have a lot of air cooling space, much weight hanging off the card. And that's why I think water cooling often for those power hungry cards is definitely the superior way to go and especially if they say that on the card itself the water block that sits on here is roughly the same price for the manufacturer like in this case Paylet as an air cooler. That can be quite interesting. That also means that this system which is modular with the quick connect um, fittings could be used for multiple generations. So if you, you would have this maybe with two radiators and your CPU in it and let's say maybe with a 5090 and then you might want to upgrade for a 1690 or something, then you can just swap out the card, keep the entire system, and at least in theory, get the 1690 with water cooling block on cheaper. But that will depend on if Link finds enough partners to partner with to get high quantity to keep the prices down low. But at least in theory, the concept sounds nice. I want to highlight that this is a mock-up. It's a prototype and I'm not sure if this will ever make it to the market. It's probably just a concept, a study, to see if this could work out to find potential partners such as Paylit or maybe if a different graphics card vendor is interested in it. And that probably also explains why this is uh, yeah, pretty thick 4090, uh, but it's mainly because of the hardware uh, monitor in the front. I'm saying hardware monitor because they also told me that they're planning to work with hardware info on this in the future, and this way maybe feature some kind of hardware monitoring options so you could display GPU information or like CPU information of your system, and that might definitely change the, the overall card aesthetics. As I said, again, it's, it's a prototype to just highlight the cooperation between a Link Plus and Paylit. And now I want to find out if I can connect the water cooling system and see what kind of temperatures we can get with this prototype. 
If we look at the card, you will see that this is aluminium. I think for the prototype, this is still milled, but for mass production, they're planning to do this um, die casting of the aluminium, which should bring down the cost of the water block quite a lot, but they still have a copper insert as structure for cooling off the GPU to have a good surface area and also good, a good thermal conductivity. This should make the card perform really well. And they also spent a lot of time in investigating different uh, fluids to make sure that there is no corrosion happening between the material mix of aluminum and copper. And I mean, if you're being honest, like this, this Corsair AIO also has copper base plate and it's an aluminum radiator. So there are definitely ways to make it work also long term. The card even comes with RGB, I just realized. Now I will plug in the water cooling connector. If you're interested how this works, I showed this in much detail in the video of last year. So just check out that one if you want to see more about the connector itself. System is up and running. I just positioned the radiator pump combination on the left. Obviously, if you would mount it in a system, you would have it probably sitting on top. But for a quick test, that should be absolutely sufficient. And that's also why I thought this would be a nice opportunity because this way I can test the card myself. We can take a look at temperatures, which might be a little bit more difficult doing this right on an exhibition. Idle temperatures are also looking great. Both a GPU and hotspot are in a great area. So this way I already know that everything must be working. The cool thing is also about the connection is that there is also electrical connection inside the tubing. So in here makes electrical connection with the fans. That means if the GPU is not telling the fans to run, it will operate passively and very quiet. So like this idle operation fans are not spinning. I'm now running gaming load in background, about a 380 to 390 watt load onto the card. I will keep it running for about 15 minutes so we can see some temperature values. With the fans electrically being connected with the graphics card means that you could run any kind of third party software to adjust the fan curve, such as let's say MSI Afterburner or GPU tweak to adjust the fans that are sitting on the radiator. Already after 10 minutes, I can't really see a change in temperature anymore. You see how flat the GPU temperature curve is. It's at 57, 58 degrees Celsius on GPU temperature and about 64 on GPU hotspot. You can see though the fan speed was only always at 30% on both of the fan outputs. I now adjusted this to 60% which results in about 1800 RPM whereas before it was about 1100 RPM. And that's I guess because this is normally an air cooled card so I'm not sure if the fan profile was adjusted or not. With a higher fan speed it is a bit louder but we can decrease the temperatures about 52 to 53 degrees Celsius GPU temperature and about 58 to 59 GPU hotspot. It definitely shows that the concept is working fine, is producing good temperatures and it now depends if Link Plus will be able to find a partner for mass production. We can see that they're already close to payload. I hope it works out maybe for an RTX 5090. Pretty sure nothing will be coming uh, for a 4090 at this point. And yeah, that was my first Computex video, pretty relaxed for a Computex video. And I think from Tuesday on, you should be able to find about one to two videos per day on my channel. I'm planning to shoot about 10 videos. It depends what kind of interesting content I can find and provide it to you. So thanks already for tuning in and see you next time. Bye bye.